Um, thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. Uh, this event was put on by the UConn College Republicans, and I thank you for all the hard work that all the members did in, in organizing um, and getting us together, especially Joe Dilling, our finance director. Um, he successfully saved uh, the university $700 in putting on this event through uh, cost saving techniques and all that. Just want to put that out there as well. Um, and I'm going to just introduce Jesse, uh, Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson, and we will uh, get started and hopefully get to questions uh, shortly. Uh, Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson is one of the most courageous, outspoken voices for the defense of our families and our country. As a critic and activist against the so-called civil rights and liberal establishment in America today, Reverend Peterson is the founder and president of Bond Action, Inc., a nonprofit organization, organization which was created to educate, motivate, and rally Americans to greater involvement in the moral, cultural, and political issues that threaten our great country. Jesse Lee is, the, is also the founder and president of Bond, Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny, a nonprofit organization whose purpose is rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. He is the author of the bold and highly popular book, Scam, How the Black Leadership Exploits Black America, and From Rage to Responsibility, as well as the guide, the guide, the seven guaranteed steps to spiritual, family, and financial success. Reverend Peterson is also a radio host of the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, a TV host, highly sought after speaker, and often invited on TV networks such as Fox, CNN, and MSNBC for his insightful commentary. Character is the most important word in Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson's vocabulary. And I'll give you the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. I appreciate it. We're going to take some questions and answers from you in a minute here. Uh, <clears throat> I want to talk to you first about this uh, campaign that we're doing to stop Obama's socialist change. And if we don't stop Obama, America is going to look like the ghettos of the inner cities. And so we want to um, first give you an idea of what socialism looked like. Um, what a, 50 years ago, the government came in and it said to black Americans that we're going to take care of you. You don't have to take care of yourself. You know, a slavery has kept you down. You don't have to worry. We'll take care of you. But you can't have a, a father in the home. You can't have a man in the home. And for some reason, black Americans decided to okay that. And they took the fathers out of the homes and the government became the daddy of the families. And then the so-called black leadership became the head of the people, of black Americans. People like Jesse Jackson and Louis Farrakhan, Al Sharpton, the um, NAACP, which is no different than the KKK itself. Uh, the uh, Congressional Black Caucus, which is a, a radical black uh, uh, political organization. And most of the black churches uh, where the preachers are not called by God, but by their mama. They are now using black Americans for their own personal gain. They keep them brainwashed, dumbed down, and demoralized. They keep them angry by telling them that America is a racist society and you can't make it because or due to racism. And so 50 years of, of, uh, of black Americans have been taught this to a point that we are now in a, in a state of emergency within the black communities. Uh, for example, abortion out of control within the black community because uh, due to socialism, the government taken over. Since the early 70s, you've had something like uh, 13 million black babies have been aborted inside the black woman's womb. Every day, 1,500 black babies are aborted. Young girls as young as 12, 13, and 14 are having two or three abortions prior to becoming an adult because they're dependent on the government rather than men and women getting married and guiding their children in the right way to go. Crying out of control uh, uh, due to uh, the government taking over. Within the black community itself, blacks are killing blacks. I mean, it is just, it's amazing at the number of young black men and women who are shooting, raping, and murdering one another because of socialism because the government has taken over and become the daddy of, of the families. You have uh, uh, out of wedlock birth, 
Nationwide, 70%, 70% of black babies are born out of wedlock. Prior to the civil rights movement, prior to the government taking over, that was unheard of. Crime wasn't out of control because men and women were getting married and being responsible for themselves. They didn't rely on the so-called black politicians or black leaders, they relied on themselves. Um, but now you have 70% of black babies born out of wedlock nationwide. Within the state of Indiana, 80%, 80% of black babies are born out of wedlock because they've been told that you don't have to work, you don't have to worry about it, the government will take care of you. There's a mentality within the black community that they don't have to be responsible. You know, for the last 50 years, they've been complaining that Americans has, haven't done hasn't done it enough for them, enough for them. And so they said, you know what, we want to live in your community. We want to live in the white community. White people said, okay, you can come and live with us. Then they said, uh, we want to integrate the schools. So they had forced busing to integrate the schools. Then that wasn't enough. And they said, well, we want affirmative action. Blacks are dumb, they can't do it. We want affirmative action. Racism is uh, keeping us down. It wasn't like that prior to the civil rights movement. There were black colleges all over the country. And blacks didn't try to force themselves upon white Americans. They would go out and educate themselves and then come in, come back and help others. But when the civil rights movement started, all of that stuff changed. So you have uh, uh, the public school system now is out of control. Absolutely. You have to, I often tell folks, you have to be dumb, blind, crippled, and crazy to send your child to a public school system today. It's not about educating your children. It's not about reading, writing, and arithmetic. It's about how to be a good homosexual, to accept homosexuality as a norm. You know, uh, and, they, and they often start out in the inner cities first because you don't have the parents there to protect the children from that. So all of these experiments are tried on black kids first. Uh, they have taught them that two boys, two girls, hanging out together, doing what they do, is just fine. They have taught them to hate their parents, that, uh, you know, don't tell your parents what you're doing because they don't understand it. They won't agree with it. They have taught them, in L.A. there's a program that if your child, your daughter is pregnant and she goes to school on a Monday morning, she can go off and have an abortion and the parents never know about it because they tell them not to tell the parents. This is socialism at work and it is, it has destroyed the black community across the country. And the more government you put in there, the worse that is, it, it, it gets. It doesn't help it at all. Well, Barack Obama is a, and his, uh, my concern is, because he is a far left liberal socialist black Democrat, and because white Americans are afraid to speak up to him for fear of being called a racist, he's gonna do the same thing. Barack Obama, uh, his first day in office, first uh, week in office, the first thing he did was to overturn an executive order that says that, that uh, President Reagan and President Bush kept an order that we're not going to pay for abortion in, in foreign countries. Well, Obama overturned that first day in office. He has spent more money since being in office than any other president since the history of America. First, I want to uh, remind you that we had 96% of black Americans voted for this guy. This, the election of Barack Obama was about black racism and white fear. And out of that 96% who voted for him, 80% of them say that they believe in God. Well, I tell them all the time on my radio show and when I speak to them that there is no way that you could believe in God and vote for a man such as Barack Obama, a godless man. He doesn't believe in the values of this country. He doesn't believe in God. But yet, they voted for him, and they did it because he is a black liberal Democrat. Had he been a black Republican conservative, he, he could have probably gotten 5% of the black votes because they have been taught to hate Republicans. They have been taught to hate conservatism. They have been told that, you know, the white man owned the Republican Party. They want to put you back in slavery. It's a dumb idea, but when you're angry and demoralized, it's easy to believe lies. And so they're constantly telling black people this, keeping them angry in order to 